Alright, hello guys, how's it going? I'm very excited to present to you our final hurricane season outlook for the hurricane season of 2020. We're going to go over our newly updated sea surface temperatures forecast, shear forecast, hurricane development forecast, overall hurricane season forecast, and our amount of storms forecast. Now before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that this hurricane season will be able to rival the 2005 hurricane season? I for one think it could, but let me know in the comments down below and let me know why and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, we're going to be going over different regions and talking about different regions that you might not be familiar with. So here is this map that I made so it's a little more clear where, where I'm talking about when I say certain things. For instance, our blue area over there is the Gulf of Mexico. You probably know that, but maybe somebody doesn't. Our East Coast region is in that green region. Our Caribbean region is in this pink region. And our main development region, which probably not a lot of you are familiar with, is this red region. We also call it for short MDR, and this is where usually tropical waves come off of Africa and they cross the Atlantic Ocean from east to west, and then they make their way towards the Caribbean. So that's a very important region. It's actually probably the most important region in a hurricane season, and you need to be familiar with what that is. Now what we're about to do is get into our sea surface temperature forecast, which is a very important factor in a hurricane season. All right, now here it is. This is our slightly above normal sea surface temperature region. And this is this area is almost normal right now, the Gulf of Mexico here. But I really feel like this one could get start to intensify. We've seen it warming in the past seven days, and I think it could continue that trend, and we see that happen pretty often. So I think it could end up being slightly above normal sea surface temperatures for this time of year. Uh, but as of right now, it's near normal, which is perfectly sufficient for tropical activity, so it's not going to hold back this region at all. But if we do see those above normal sea surface temperatures, that's only going to help more development occur within this region. Now here is our above normal sea surface temperature region, and as you can see, it takes up our entire MDR or main development region, and also our Caribbean region there. However, we do have a third layer, and this is our well above normal region. This area is dealing with temperatures, sea surface temperatures that are far above what is normal for this time of year uh, in, in that red region, which is most of the Caribbean there, that is south of Cuba and south of uh, Haiti and the Dominican Republic there, even north of it a little bit, but mostly below it. This is an area that is far above normal sea surface temperatures, and if storms do track through this region, they are going to see rapid intensification if we continue to see these above average sea surface temperatures. This is highly favorable conditions in this region. I posted a map to my Twitter the other day, but this area is already highly favorable for hurricanes and major hurricanes right now, June 15th. I'm very fearful about how favorable this region just can get. All, I mean, we're not going to see our peak to hurricane season until we get to August and September. We have months for this area to just continue to warm. We're really going to need to watch this one closely, and obviously I will keep you guys up to date through the next couple of months on how this region is doing. All right, now we're about to move on. We're going to start to talk about our wind shear and our development forecast. Those are two extremely important factors in this year's hurricane season. Now, first things first, here's our shear forecast, and we're going to have below average wind shear. Uh, wind shear is one of the things, the two major things that holds a hurricane back. First, we have the Saharan dust, and then second, we have our wind shear. The Saharan dust can't really be forecasted this far out, so that's going to be a wild card that we're going to have to figure out later on. But we do know that since we have a La Nina developing, actually a strong La Nina developing in the Pacific Ocean, we know that there is going to be less shear within this region, particularly here for the Caribbean and the main development region is where we will have less wind shear. Uh, the wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast is really going to be determined by the jet stream mostly, uh, but this area that is below, re below average, we know in an El Nino we have above average wind shear, which really eats up hurricanes, and in La Niñas we have practically none in this region, which really just makes it very, very favorable for hurricanes to just develop uh, freely without anything holding it back. That's why La Niñas are typically huge hurricane years, and then El Niños are very quiet hurricane years. There's a very big correlation for our Enso region there. Now let's get into that development forecast here. And this is just taking the previous factors we talked about and just telling you guys what the, what the odds are for development. And we're going to have above average development 
very favorable in our main development region here. Uh, we have above average sea surface temperatures, below average shear. That equals big time hurricane development in our main development region. Now for the Gulf, we have slightly above average development uh, for this region. Really, the we don't know what's going to happen with the shear because it's going to depend on where the jet stream is set up. So that's something that changes from week to week, day to day. So we're not really able to forecast that this far out. Uh, and then we have our... Uh, Caribbean region here, and this is where we have well above normal development possible, less wind shear, and also the well above normal sea surface temperatures. This area is going to be very dangerous, and I think a lot of storms are going to be quite weak when they move into this region from the main development region, but once they do move into this Caribbean region, I think we could see rapid intensification just because of how favorable these areas are. I think that this could be a pit stop for hurricanes that will become major hurricanes once they reach this region and stay over this region for multiple days. All right, now we're about to move on and we're going to talk about our overall forecast and then we're going to get into our hurricane numbers forecast. All right, now here's that overall forecast, and this is a very exciting one because I get to really just speak my mind about all of these different regions. You can see I've kind of just split it up in the regions that we originally talked about in the beginning of the video, Gulf of Mexico, East Coast, Caribbean, and Main Development region. So we'll talk about all of these individually. Now for our green region, we have tropical waves will have a much easier time developing in this green region. I know I get oddly specific here, uh, but I wanted to be more specific with this and just kind of tell you guys exactly what I think each region is going to kind of be like. Uh, so tropical waves will, will have a much easier time developing here. Less wind shear, above average sea surface temperatures. Usually we see a lot of these tropical waves fizzle out. I think we're going to see less of that this year. Obviously there will be so many. Some will fizzle out and some will intensify. Uh, but I think we're just going to have less of them fizzling out and more of them intensifying just because of how favorable this region really is. And in the Caribbean, we're going to just work it the way a tropical storm would move across the Atlantic. So we're going to move it from east to west. So they move through the main development region. And then most of the time, they're going to make their way into this Caribbean region. And I think rapid development is going to occur here. And we could see many storms become major hurricanes once they reach this region. And I think a perfect example, obviously, I don't think we will see a storm exactly like this. And there's no guarantee that we will even see a, strong, a storm as strong as this one. But Dorian is actually a perfect example of this because Dorian moved from our main development region. And I think it was only a tropical storm. And then it kind of reached uh, where we saw it kind of in that very eastern region of the Caribbean. And then it was going to make its way. At first, we thought it was going to hit Haiti and Dominican Republic. And then uh, it kind of trended west or eastward. And we thought maybe it would hit Puerto Rico. And it actually tracked even further east than Puerto Rico. Uh, but this storm was only a tropical storm, and then once it reached north of Haiti and Dominican Republic, it rapidly intensified, and I think we could see a lot of things like that occurring where these storms move in as tropical storms or maybe a Category 1 hurricane and very quickly become a Category 2, 3, 4 hurricane after that point. Now, for the Gulf, near normal development, but most storms could already be major because they moved through that red region in our Caribbean into the Gulf, so we don't really need the development to be that good if we're already seeing a Category 3 or 4 storm move into the Gulf, which obviously could happen, could not happen, there's no guarantees. Uh, so this region, the development will be near normal, uh, but again, this, the storms will already have really developed quite nicely in the red region, I believe. Uh, and the purple region here for the East Coast is just going to be a wild card. We never really know because they could just track all into the Gulf. We see that happen sometimes, or sometimes we have a high pressure system set up perfectly to where they move through the Caribbean and then they want to kind of hit the Bahamas and go up the East Coast like Dorian. Um, but you know, it's, it really just depends on that high pressure system. And again, that's another one of those things that it's going to really vary from week to week, day to day. All right. So what we're going to do is we're about to move on to that hurricane number forecast. We're going to go over the amount of named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. All right. Now here is the things we're going to be going over. I, I just named it, but I'm going to tell you guys again, named storms, hurricanes, and major hurricanes. Now, here would be an average season. We would have 12 named storms in an average season. We'd have six hurricanes in an average season, and we would have two major hurricanes in an, in an average season. Now, here's our 2020 forecast, forecasted amount of all of these things. We're expecting 14 to 20 named storms this year, which again is at least two more than the average. We're expecting seven to 11 hurricanes this year, which is at least one more than the average. 
And we are expecting four to seven major hurricanes this year, which is at least two more than the average for than the average amount there. So we're expecting four to seven seven major hurricanes or eleven hurricanes or twenty named storms would all be a hy- hyperactive hurricane season. That's kind of moving into that very rare territory uh, where you're in a very, very extremely active hurricane season, which this one has all the characteristics of a hurricane season that would be like that. So it is very possible, but it could be on the lower end of all of these where we see perhaps 14 named storms, seven hurricanes, and four major hurricanes, which would just be an above average season, but we see that from time to time. So this is ranging from a pretty normal above average season to an extremely above average season. All of these things are on the table and it really just depends on a lot of different things. Uh, But as of right now, we are very much so leaning on an above average hurricane season this year. All right. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you want this winter, this upcoming winter to be like? Cause I talked about our winter thoughts in last and yesterday's video. Actually, you can check that out. And I also talked about why last year's winter forecast was so darn bad. And Amanda said, I just want a snowy winter. And I think a lot of you feel that way. Like it's been two years now without a snowy winter. I think everybody's just ready for a snowy winter in general. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.